Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down and chat with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests and talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self. So let's get started. Hey there, and happy new year. Today, I want to hop on here and just kind of share some additional thoughts. I know that last week, I kind of took some time off and just really spent that time to be present, be present with myself, my family. As much as we tried to get together, of course, everything was delayed because of the storms. I know that it was greatly affected across the whole nation. So a lot of patients were tested, a lot of faith, a lot of just really surrendering and letting go and Ironically, that was the theme of last week's episode. So timing is everything, right? I just spent this time to sit back and reflect and ask myself, really, you know, there's so much uncertainty in this season, in this chapter, in this newness that we are all embarking on as we head into 2023. And as I was taking this time to kind of think things through, I realize like just how scary it can feel as we begin anything new, right? Like we try something new that we've always wanted to do and we're definitely going to suck at it, right? We're never going to be great at our first time. And so I took that into account and just really took, um, you know, more or less that, that step back and said, well, how can I approach 2023 with that same idea and Make it so that it's more exciting versus scary. And so as we embark on this new season, starting over, rebuilding, reinventing, recalibrating, whatever that looks like for you, I know that it can feel just daunting. It can be intimidating. And, you know, having that experience overall can either empower or disempower us. And so maybe you've experienced setbacks, challenges, that have really inhibited you from taking those steps forward, whether that be in your business, your career, or personal life. And I just want to shed some light on this. And I think that as I'm recording this episode, I literally am in the thick of it. So I appreciate all the patience and the cheering and the rooting on because seriously, that's what we all need to do and come together. And as we embark on this, you know, perhaps you're feeling unfulfilled and ready to make some big changes. And whatever that reason is, starting over can be a challenge, but also that exciting opportunity to create a life that you absolutely love and one that's more in alignment with who you are at this particular time in your life. So taking that into account, we as humans, we evolve, we change. And so if we're trying to hold on to what did work in the past and, you know, maybe it was pre-pandemic because I feel like these past two, three years have really shaken up our entire existence. It's shaken us to our core. And that's where we really have to take that step back and reassess again, who are we? What are our values? What are our goals? What are the passions that really light us up? or piss us off or just we feel like we have to do something about it. And so these are questions I'm internalizing that I am asking myself. And as I look back on this version of myself, you know, I'm just going to call her RB 2.0 because I feel like I've already reinvented myself in my first book, Chasing Perfection, A Journey to Healing, Fitness and Self-Love. It really was about letting go of who I should be and creating the woman that I know that I was meant to be. And having that reflection of personal growth and development has really empowered me to, one, go after the life that I absolutely love and create and step into this version of me and tap into the passions and really finding my purpose and my calling. And I think that is something that so many of us really crave that. And as I have reinvented myself the first time around and coming out and what you see, you know, with the brands that I built, including the Confident Woman brand, I Am Athletics brand, my own personal brand, all of this really came through my own personal experiences. But 
what I've come to realize in all of this is that I'm trying to hang on to all of that, which was a different version of me. And so obviously as I grow, it's only a necessity that my businesses grow. They grow along with me because if I'm not growing and bringing my businesses and my community and everything with me, then I feel like I'm doing a major disservice because I feel like I'm straddling two lives. One in the past, which is, you know, maybe that's the business that did do very well, but yet you just, there's no passion anymore. It's very unfulfilling. It doesn't light you up. And so you just don't even enjoy going to work. Like where, where is that life? Right. And so then there's this new version that has yet to be created. And that's my, for me, it's my 3.0. And there's this uncertainty, like, who is this woman that I'm supposed to be, you know, evolving into? What if it doesn't go the way I planned? What if these businesses that I enhance or rebuild or rebrand or do whatever to start all over again, what if that doesn't pan out? What if, what if, what if, right? So if we can find a way to break through that what if and really step into that place of uncertainty from a place of having that open heart and open mind and learning to embrace all that life has to offer. The reality is, is that life is happening for us if we choose to see things that way, right? So if we are playing that victim to our own stories and that we replay from our past experiences, failed businesses, failed relationships, whatever that is, taking that into account, but flipping that narrative on its head, no longer looking at it as a failure, but an opportunity to learn and grow. And that is something that you can take into this new season that you embark on. And having that past history that you have gotten this far in life, you haven't given up entirely, you are here. And that is something to root your confidence in. And looking through that lens that if I'm able to get this far, as sucky as it could be at times and as amazing as it is at other times, taking that whole approach into this new season and embracing the suck, embracing uncertainty from a place of grace and gratitude. And that's something that I'm personally going through this season with a fresh perspective, a new lens, giving myself that hope and insight that so much is possible for me. So much goodness is yet to come. And in this season to get to that, I have to embrace the suck and I have to learn to embrace it with an open heart, an open mind, but more importantly, with grace and gratitude. And in this season, it's, you know, I'm finding myself going back to the things that I absolutely love. I miss writing. I miss writing so much. Like I miss it to my soul. Like it's a part of me. It's a part of my identity that I feel like it has kind of been buried by all these expectations and demands that, you know, RB 2.0 had to experience. And so I'm getting back into my writing and I started a series called Grace and Gratitude. And I will link it in the show notes, but It's real life, real time, real happenings of things that I'm experiencing, but learning to see the silver lining and the good in all things. And I'm just openly sharing, you know, my experiences, what had worked for me, helping myself to heal, to learn, to grow, and more importantly, as a way to thrive. And so as we reinvent ourselves in these next seasons, or maybe you're not even reinventing, maybe you're just evolving and it's a part of the growth process. And growing is never linear and it's never fun and it's never easy consistently. There's going to be all over messinesses. And that is exactly what this Grace and Gratitude series is all about. Finding the silver lining and being grateful for it. Embracing that lesson that life is showing us and teaching us. And it's also a way to give ourselves grace because we're going to mess up. We're going to have setbacks. We're probably going to take one, two steps forward and take 20 back. But the point is, is that we have to extend grace to ourselves to pick ourselves back up and start again. And the same as 
what we do for ourselves, it allows us to extend grace to others. It allows us to come to a place with an open heart, open mind, but really more importantly, a place of compassion, a place of empathy, a place of humanness. And when we can strip all of that aside, that's who we really are. We are here as humans living a spiritual existence. And so when we could tap into that spiritual being that it lies within us, that's where all of creation and magic and all the wonderment can really start to come alive again. And so that's just something I'm personally going through. And I wanted to share that again. This is real time. This is really what's happening in life. And I realize that I probably don't do that enough on this podcast, but these are things that I'm realizing in my own self-reflection journey is that's a way for me to process and heal. I actually kind of retreat when things get hard and I struggle, I turn inward and I kind of go dormant. I go silent. And in that time is when I'm seeking, I'm discovering, I'm learning and I'm growing. And so I hope that kind of inspires you that if you are in the season as well, to not give up hope, to keep that dream alive, to keep that spark ignited and to know that, you know, whatever is happening, if things are going wonderful, by all means, holy moly, I mean, keep it up, give yourself props, clap for you, like cheer for you and keep that momentum going. The same approach applies If you're excelling in life, then keep that mentality going. Keep that life, breathe that life back into it and keep it consistently growing and going. And when we do that, all we're doing is giving our dreams life. We are giving ourselves a refresher. And so how do we start over and create a life that we absolutely love? These are some of the tips that I was jotting down and was really helpful and insightful for me because one, it kind of gave me that guideline. And I wanted to share this with you as maybe it helps shape some of the framework for you as well. So first tip is be open to change. And as you start building your new life, be open to new opportunities and experiences. They're going to come. They're always going to show us something. And that's why we have to be open to experiencing it with everything that life has to offer. We need to embrace change and be willing to try the new things because you never know where they're going to lead you. That first time starting something or doing something that you're 99.9% going to suck at might be that thing that is your thing. You just have to keep showing up for it. If it's something that you know is tugging on your heartstrings, try it. Show up. Give it a go, give it a go again, and give it another go. And when you try things out, you'll know if it fits. You know if it's meant for you, and you start building that momentum. And second is identify your values and your goals. So before we can start making any big changes, it's important to understand what is most important to you. So take some time to reflect and just really go inward and figure out what is you know, what are your core values? What do you want out of life? What lights you up? What brings you joy? What do you stand for? What are you against? Like, what is your advocacy? And really get to know who you are. What are your long-term goals? What makes you feel alive, fulfilled, motivated? By clarifying your values and goals, you can create a roadmap for building a life that feels more meaningful, fulfilling, rewarding, all that stuff, right? That's what we're actually after. Fulfillment. If things aren't fulfilling, it's like a soul suck. Our energy is depleted. Our mind is depleted. Our soul is like, ugh, let's get over this. And so when we can really identify those things, we find our passion. Again, what brings you joy and fulfillment? Identifying your passions and pursuing them wholeheartedly. Like that is who you are. And this will help you build a life that's more meaningful, impactful, really more fulfilling. So that is my third tip. And then, you know, as we keep going, it's these little steps, right? So fourth is taking small steps and just really being patient with yourself. Starting over really is that process. It's a messy, ugly process. 
and it takes time to build a new foundation. And so if you're looking for, you know, what are those foundational pillars? I share all about that in my Fit From Within course, which really, really takes a deep dive into the four fundamental pillars, which is your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual health and well-being. And having those four pillars that we can really build the foundation upon lays the groundwork and we keep filling and fueling those fundamental pillars. And as we grow, they're becoming more solid. We're building upon them. We're going back to the basics. And, you know, in this season, I'm finding myself like, oh, I had to do a self-check and realize, oh, one of those legs is a little wobbly, right? So we have to go back into those areas and give it a little TLC, pump it up, fill your tires up, however you want to apply that analogy in your life. It's about being in tune with your mind, body, and soul. And, you know, again, the soul lives inside this physical existence and that's your being. This is the vehicle that carries us through into living our purpose-driven lives. You know, so we really have to just take that step in accountability. So don't try to change everything at once. I mean, we all know that that's impossible and more chaotic and probably adding more to your stress and overwhelm. So instead, focus on taking small incremental steps towards your goals. And if you're looking for some of those resources as well, I will link in the show notes the SMART goals. And that is something that has been a tremendous help in identifying and achieving the goals that I've set all these years. So be patient with yourself. And, you know, progress is not linear. And we are striving for progress, not perfection. You know, chasing perfection, that was the biggest lesson is really letting go, letting go of those beliefs, letting go of all the things that I thought I needed to be to have the life that I absolutely love. And, you know, and I encourage you to read the book, Chasing Perfection. It really is a journey to healing, fitness, and self-love. And of course, you know, it's told through my own personal experiences with so many takeaways and really just a way that you can see for yourself that you're not alone in this journey. And as heavy as things may feel, and, you know, even as much as I'm saying this right now, I know it doesn't feel that way when you're in this season. And that was something that even I, you know, like I said, part of my own healing journey is I retreat, I go inward. It's just, who I am and I've accepted that and it's not something I'm really willing to change because I know it works and it's just everyone has their own processes. But I did feel like sharing or speaking out or talking about things in the thick of it wasn't the timing that I was feeling most comfortable in because sometimes it's hard to talk about the darkness when you don't even know you're in darkness. And so that was something that took some time as I had to do again reflection and figure out where am I? Why is this not where I thought I would be? Or what happened in these past year, two years, three years? Like, yeah, obviously a a whole worldly pandemic hit, but then again, it's kind of the entirety of it. It wasn't ever just one thing. It's always our patterns. It's a combination of things. And for us to figure that out, we kind of have to follow the breadcrumbs and go back. And that's where we're starting over again. You know, metaphorically speaking or figuratively speaking, we're about to embark on a whole new year. So if you're in the season or just looking to be supported, or even if you're wanting to support somebody in the season, I encourage you to come into the Confident Woman community. It's our free community where it really is just an open, safe space to show up as yourself and just be you. Talk about the hard stuff. Talk about the good stuff. Talk about all the things you want to, because this is how we learn. This is how we grow. It's through connection. It's through conversation. It's through community. And if you feel that you're missing that, I invite you into the Confident Woman community. The link is in the show notes as well. And so, you know, having others around you that really know what you're going through Even though we don't have to say it, we all know it because if you're a human and I'm a human, we all experience the same thing. We're all living this life, the same life here on earth at the same time, 2022, going into 2023, going into 24 and so on. 
we're all moving at the same pace. We all have the same amount of time in a day. We all have the same amount of calendars, you know, 12-month calendar in a year. And we're all doing the best we can with what we know and what we have. So I encourage you to just stay positive, stay hopeful, and be kind to yourself. Extend that grace, grace and gratitude. Gratitude has been really a lifesaver. It's an anchor that sometimes you take for granted. And that was um, something I, I realized was more or less being taken for granted. I was just kind of going through the motions. And that was part of my own journey that I was like, oh my goodness, I have to go back, really back, like take steps back to day one, basically, of my gratitude journal. And it was so insightful because as you know, you're reinventing yourself or rebranding or rebuilding or restarting, whatever that is, go back to basics and have those anchoring supports that you know is something you can always go back to. And of course, for me, it's gratitude. It's my fitness journey and really giving myself that love and grace and going back to it. So ironically enough, I just reread and re-listened actually to Chasing Perfection, my own book. And I'll be honest, I was inspired. <laughs> as weird as that is. I mean, I wrote the book, I read it a million times, but when you hear something at a different place in your life, it just sticks with you differently. And so I found that by taking my own words of advice, I've put them to use. And here it is. I'm doing this all from a place of my own personal growth and really coming at the season, this episode even, from a place of love and gratitude. And I'm grateful for it all. And it's really an opportunity for me to give back to all of you, to help you through your own journey, to help you through our community, through our courses, through our journals, the books, the podcast, the apparel, like everything, right? It really is meant to be a way that is used to improve and make better of the quality of life that we really are created for. But we have to believe that. And so, you know, really just remember to celebrate those small wins and accomplishments along the way. You know, starting over isn't a setback. It really is an opportunity to begin again, to create a life that you absolutely love, one that's more authentic and aligned with who you are and what you want. And so I hope that these tips that, of course, I'm going to put more of them into our show notes as a recap, but these tips, they're in mind, you know, you can confidently embrace the journey of starting over and create a life that you love. And that itself is empowering because you, have the power to create your own story. So let it sit with you to know you've got this. We've got you. And if you need anything, leave me a voicemail. Leave me a message on this podcast. Hit me up in my DMs. Message me in our community group. Reach out. Reach out. Because we all need each other. And so just want to wish you all a safe, healthy, and happy new year. Take care. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening.